Okay, guys, today we'll be learning about Matplotlib, a visualization library in Python. So, before you import Matplotlib in your Jupyter notebook, which I'm using here in VS Code, first of all, we need to install that. So, you come here, you type pip install Matplotlib. And you can see that I already have that installed. That's why I had this. So, you can use that now and import Matplotlib as PLT. But you can also see that by using the PyPlot. This is, as you can see here, it shows us that PyPlot is being used for interactive plot and simple cases of programmatic plot generation. So, I think the PyPlot as, as a helper for Matplotlib so that it can make our plots interactive. Now, and we are putting that as PLT. So, the first thing I did here was actually to use a style for our drawings. And there are like a couple of these. So, if we I think there there is one of two zero, and there's also one about um on of course um matplotlib. <laughs> in dash, um I think gallery. So if we you can show up, I'll show you what that looks like. If we run this first one, just for an example, let's try on something. You see how it comes out like this. But now let's try the next. And then run the drawing. It comes out differently. Let's try the next one. It comes out differently. So the three of them have their own different outputs. So, but for me, I prefer using the first one. So. Now, the first thing we are going to see here is that we are initializing MP arrays, one dimensional arrays. And the map plot sleep works is very, actually very simple. For you to plot something, you just have to write plt.plot your x and your y coordinate point, then plt.show. And that brings up a plot for you. It is a simple linear plot of x and y coordinates. Going over to the next one, if we run it, we see that we have added something to our previous cell, which is this. And this, we just trying to give our plot some size. As you can see now here, different from what happened initially, we can now see fixed figure size 800 by 320. And this can be useful if you want to save your figure and all of that. Also, we can have a plot of a single data, you know, before we having two X and Y variables, but now we have only one data and that's done by plt.plot. Then this one is trying to give our data some more interesting feature. So there's something in our flip called marker. And that marker now is for our points. So if you can see where we have one here, if you can visualize this in an open place, yep. So if you can see well, we have one of them here, one here, one here, and one here. Yeah, so that marker, if it's O, it can be asterisk, it can be anything actually. So that's how we put our markers for our plot. So now if you notice, the marker comes where you have x and y at 2, x at 3 and y at 2, x at 10 and y at 5. So if x is at 10, y is at 5, which is here, that's where it comes. And also when x is at 8 and when y is at 7. That's here. So that's for that. Next up, we have this. So what this gives us is basically plot without lines and you can see here we also indicated them with the marker you are using asterisk for example or you can use o but here are using asterisk and it gives us this as our output up next we can see we have three same thing we have before but we can see we have three arguments yeah so now there's a sequence for these arguments which is marker what is the drawing line then the color so here yeah, our marker is O. We do already line with double dashes and we're having a color of green. If we look at this very well, you see that sorry, you see that the colors are green and then the markers are circular. Then after we have something called marker size. So this is a short form for MS. You can also put it as marker size to still work but the short form is ms those to know i'm a first year so we first of all initialize 
our points. Then we do pure tip of blood. Y points our marker is zero. Marker size is fifteen. Then up next we have marker edge color. The new thing we added was marker edge color. Let me see. It can also be marker edge color. I don't to see around. But we have a short form as MEC. So we have the marker as O, marker size as 15, MEC as red. So I'm not sure whether it's visible or not, but we can check that here. When we run this, you can check that here. Look at the edges where well, you see the red colors. Or to be more effective, let's just use black. Run that again. Come here. If you can see the black edges. Then we have MFC. MFC is the color of the points. So that's what we're adding as R, which is red here. Yeah. So I know we're talking about details of graph a lot, but we're taking it up slowly to explain them bit by bit. So you can also use hexadecimal as your MFC and your MPC. It's like, like what we have here and it still works in Matplotlib. Also, you can use names of colors, which is like what we have there. MFC Coral and MFC Aqua. I'll call like this and Coral, which are the edges. Marker size is 15, marker is O, works. Next up, we can specify our line style and the additions what we did before. But then here we are using two points, X and Y point. They're not in PLT plot, but plot X points y point then line style dotted and there are other different kinds of line styles next so we can specify the color of our line which is here we have it as red also you can specify in the decimal form which is something like this which is giving us a kind of greenish color okay you can use, also you can use the word format which is giving us in a pink form then you can also specify line with a line with it does change the side of the line, which is something like this we got. Then, also, you can plot two points separately on the same graph by doing them separate PLT dot plots. So here, when we initialize the X points and the Y points, we then do separate PLT dot plots for X and PLT dot plots for Y, and that gives us the two lines on the transport. So on most of my plots, deep knows that there are two different points, so it automatically gives them two different colors for the two different points. And then you PLT dot show. It shows the graph. Now going into labels, we also can label our axis. So when we finish initializing our points, we, put, we plot the two points. Then we can do X label, which is our label on X axis. Average pulse and Y label, label Y axis, calorie bondage, and then plus the show. For this next one, we can also add the title. The same thing we had before, but then we're just adding a plus the title fits bit data then the next one we can go ahead a step further and customize more yeah. so the first thing we're doing is to initialize our points then plot the plot or point then we have to make a dictionary of a form family a customization by ourselves although not probably pass default font size but we want to make a customized one so we have the font one family son family serif Color blue, the size is 20. Then the font 2 formula serif also. Color is dark red and the size is 15. So the first thing we're going to do in our X label is to this label here is to make it average pulse. Then the font dictionary is font 2, which is this. And the Y label, which is this. The font dictionary is font 2. And for the fit bit data, which is our title, we make the font is font 1. That's like that's showing how to customize your x label y label and title so then going a step further you can position our title to different locations here we have it at the left we can also change the center and now bring it at the center of our the dot also at the right we also bring this at the right of our plot moving ahead we have additional grid to our points grid are more of horizontal or vertical lines that detail our plots more so if you look at this in, in better view you see that the grid kind of makes it look more 
scientific if in my opinion rather than what you have happened before that are all plain so that's purely the upgrade and you always put this among one of the last things you, you will draw great for that we can also specify a single axis for our grid we do that by after everything i've done on the plots we do that by putting the axis in the grid as a, as, as a grid argument and labeling it x if you label this y you will see we don't need put for y so the argument of axis for the grid it turns out the axis that want our grid to be on a rare thing you can do is to make your grid color and your grid line style and your grid line width so here we put it as hot pink can put it as red we put one cell as this or put width as one can put that as three or two i'll run it again we can see that the effect or the, it changes so now it's, it's more darker and more visible and also the color changes to red there are all different styles or way you can customize a simple plot in matplotlib also you cannot only have a single plot you can have multiple plots that's where matplotlib has built the subplots so now in case the subplot you have three arguments which is your row column and the position so now for this plot the first plot we're going to initialize x then y and loop your the subplots. First of all, this and this, which is one and two, tells us or tells my project brother this the dimension of our subplot. So it's telling that it's telling my project that we want to have a one row subplot that has two columns. Then we're putting this our plot in position one. Then this one telling my project that we want to have one row and two columns. I'm putting it in position two. You can see the first and the second are similar in both sides, but the third is different. So printing this, running this cell now gives us what we, exactly what we asked for. So here, I'm plotting these first values, this is X and Y, here in the first position, which is from the left. And I'm plotting these second ones in the second position here. And also, notice that it was one row and two columns. As our subplot. Going ahead, if you want to check, you can also swap this. And this is giving us two rows and one column. So you can also guess in your head what's going to give us in was the plot above each other. So exactly what we guessed, and that's what's going to, and that was brought out. Taking this one step further, we're going to try multiple plots. Here we're specifying that we want to have two rows, three columns everywhere. Two rows, three columns, then one five position one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we're going to specify plt does show then running this will give us six plots of two rows and three columns so this in position one position two position three position four position five and position six which has all specified here going further you can also label the titles of our subplots the first one here has the plt title as profit and the one has the as loss the same plt does surplus as being earlier with what we used here the difference is that you added the titles to the subplot going further you can also add a, a bigger title. That means if you want to have title for a subplot, then you want to have title for the, everything together. You add that as purely the subtitle. This keyword here. Then after that, we can also have what we call scatter plots in matplotlib, which is something like this with here. So we initialize the x point, the y point. Then we now see purely the scatter of x points and y points. Then purely the show. You can also be thinking about purely the grid. Let's try that and see what happens. Yeah. So you can see it works for all source scatter plots and you can also customize it like what I explained before. Next up we have this we are trying to join two sets of two points. Don't know you're confused here. I mean those, I just spent two points X and Y and X and Y two. We're plotting them on the same graph. But then we it is very confusing because of they have the same values. So then we can also add something to the, our plot, which is the color. And not specify the colors of both of them. We can, and you can see we use different varieties of specification here. We did them with our words. I also did them with color codes. So now you can easily differentiate between this point and this point. Sorry, and this point. Next up, we have a more customizable way of making a scatter plot. You can see here we initialize an array of colors. So then when we put our points, we don't want numpy colors, we want our specific colors. So 
we put um, the same number digit we have here as one two three four five six seven eight eight digits and eight colors so that's going to give each and every one of our points different colors by specifying in the scatter plot argument as c equals to colors so then going ahead you can also use a color map which is which you specify that same map here and we're using the option of preview this in this option moving ahead we want to also have a color bar which is something like this you have to add plc the color bar after specifying the c map in your scatter argument this is giving us the kind of like the gradation of the colors we have on our plot from 100 to 0 is going from purple to all the way to yellow going ahead we can also specify the sizes of our points this looks very very weird but the thing is that we have different sizes 20 50 100 200 1000 60 and the rest you can give that as an option or as an argument in your plc scatter after specifying the point and that gives you different sizes of point in your scatter diagram going further you can also specify the thickness or the lightness of your point by using the keyword alpha alpha only ranges between one and zero so alpha one is basically very very thick point and alpha of zero is basically no point at all because they're all like let's check 0 0.01 try 0 0.1 you be very very faint i bet you can really see this but the fact is that alpha can't pass one so if you try alpha of two and write that we get an error saying that alpha two is also range zero to one so you should take, take it back to one next up we have bar plots bar plots in, in my is as easy as others you can have you have your x point and your y point which are here as taken as n-dimensional arrays in numpy when the arrays to be specific then you now put them in plc dot bar x point and y point then plc dot show going, going further you can also have vertical track horizontal bar plot you know this one vertical bar plot which is the default bar plot in matplotlib vertical bar plot then, then horizontal bar plot here horizontal bar plot is specified with bar with a hedge in front this hitch so give it it gives it in vertical format and as you can tell the x is turn kind of the, to the y is here because a b c d fr from here as the horizontal turns to the vertical here then your y which is 0 to 1 to 8 here turns to your x here you can specify the color of your bars in your bar plot the default map plot is blue, but here you can prefer it to red. By passing this color, mm, your PLC double bar. Also, same thing for the bar each plot, which are the vertical to the horizontal bar plot. You can also specify the width of your bars by adding the width argument to the PLC double bar, giving them specific widths. And also, same as the height, you can specify the height in the vertical horizontal bar plots. So your width here in the normal bar plot will correspond with the height in the horizontal bar plots because you can be token of width when you are on the horizontal level you take up the height the bars expand when you're on the horizontal level next up we're going to go to histogram plots histogram are different from bar plots because this is the hard spaces within them histogram are all joined together so we're going to have first of all a an mp the random the normal you see the normal distribution of random numbers in numpy or placing a histogram on that number and showing them easy and simple like this also you can customize them to have different kind of things next up we can have pi plus and mat plus lib so pi plus is basically a circular plus that gives the shape according to percentages of different variables passed to it so here we have our y points of an mp array of this i have variables of this what pi plotting will go for us is going to give everything from a percentage to each and all the labels and represent them on in circular form on the labels arguments it gives giving to my labels labeling each side of the pi you can also see that we can we can have a start angle at 90 start angle at 90 is basically making the angle start from here we can also have that at 180 it's going to give it as you guess a horizontal place starting from it is here then we can have 270 which is something like this so all customizability is available with pipe plot when it comes to the start angle 
So you can also want to bring out a particular portion of the blood and you can do that by having the explode, the explode keyword and taking that to an array. The array telling us the ones we want to explode and the ones we don't want to explode. If we have an array of all 0.2, we here really very small because anything above one will be actually very very unreasonable. So you can see all are exploded, that means all are taken out. But the reason why we have it as only zero here is because of one to only math. And math corresponding to the first in the enables array and here will, only, will be the only one that will be exploded. And then the rest are all on zero and they won't be exploded. Next up we have shadow. Shadow is like having this kind of edge shadowness and making our plot look finer. In my plot lib. you can visualize that more if you come here and we exp expand this a little sorry yeah you can see the edges are more of design shadow like next up you can also prefer the colors you want to use like all oh, like what we'll be doing since you can prefer the colors in an array you then give that as an argument in your player c dot pi and show that it gives to give you the same colors you specified and you can also see that you can do it that in different formats the words letters and also the rgb or the code dead format another thing you can do is also to give a legend in our pie plot legends are more of like markers so we can have this in our plot plt legend and that's automatically generate this legend for us telling us that the blue is for math the green is for english the red is for physics and the lighter blue is for chemistry the last thing here we want to have it put a title for our legend which is by adding this title keyword inside our legend so that's going to give us a title for our legend which is subject in this case thank you guys this is the end of this part of my plot see you in the next one